वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स टू अनदर वीडियो लेसन इन द सिलेबस फॉर क्लास नाइन केमिस्ट्री इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियो लेसन वी हैड फिनिश्ड अप टिल द टॉपिक ऑफ सिंबल्स ऑफ डिफरेंट एलिमेंट्स फ्रॉम द चैप्टर एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स वी विल रिज्यूम टुडे फ्रॉम द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक एंड द टॉपिक ऑफ स्टडी फॉर टूडे विल बी अटोमिक mass where we will be having a concept of atomic mass as relative mass we will also study about average atomic mass followed by gram atomic mass and finally we will introduce the concept of molecules so let's begin today's discussion with the topic of study that is atomic mass we know that the smallest portion of matter is atom it is so small in size that it may not be possible to isolate a single atom and then weigh it moreover the mass of the atom of an element is also extremely small for example an atom of hydrogen has mass equal to 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram which can also be interpreted as 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg what does it show it indicates that a gram or kilogram is a very big unit to express the mass of an atom of a particular element that's where the concept of atomic mass as relative mass comes in so to solve this problem it was suggested that the mass of an atom should be expressed as the relative mass this means atomic mass of an element is not its actual mass but relative mass whenever we are making use of this word relative we are necessarily trying to express the value of any quantity by the help of comparing it with a standard in this case when we talk about atomic mass as relative mass we do it by fixing the mass of some atom of a particular element as the standard mass so it could be done by fixing the mass of some atom of a particular element as the standard mass the masses of the other elements could be compared relative to it now in the beginning hydrogen was chosen to be a standard element because it happens to be the lightest of all the elements the relative atomic mass of an element with respect to hydrogen relative atomic mass 
of an element with respect to hydrogen can be written as mass of one atom of the element divided by mass of one atom of hydrogen the relative atomic mass is expressed in units known as atomic mass unit which in short is written as emu however it can also be simply represented as u that stands for unified mass an atom of oxygen is 16 times heavier than the atom of hydrogen this means that if atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 u then the atomic mass of oxygen will be 16 u so if atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 u then atomic mass of oxygen will be 16 u there is no need to consider the actual masses of the elements for expressing their atomic masses now there was a problem the problem with hydrogen was that it exists in three forms with different masses the different forms in which an element exists are actually known as isotopes we shall be discussing about it in much more detail in due course of time but for the time being we just concentrate on the problem that was arising in choosing hydrogen as a standard so what was the problem the problem with hydrogen was that it exists in three forms with different masses so if suppose an element has got three different values for the mass how can we choose it as a standard the question arises that which form should be considered for comparing the atomic masses then hydrogen was replaced by oxygen as the standard element but the same problem persisted with oxygen also so in 1961 iupac selected most abundant isotope of carbon with mass 12u and 1/12th of this mass that is 1u was considered as the standard so in 1961 iupac suggested that relative atomic mass of an element is equal to mass of one atom of the element divided by 1 by 12 of mass of one atom of carbon 12 element carbon is used as a reference for expressing the atomic masses of elements this means that an atomic mass unit may be defined as the mass of 1 by 12 of the mass of one atom of c 12 for example atomic mass of oxygen is 16 u 
This means that an atom of oxygen is 16 times heavier than 1 twelfth of the mass of carbon atom taken as 1 mole. Thus, atomic mass of oxygen, for example, will be equal to 16 times the mass of 1 twelfth of atomic mass of carbon. So, this will be equal to 16 into 1 by 12 into 12 u. So, that should be equal to 16 u. So, this is the concept of atomic mass as relative mass. Now, most of the elements exist in a number of forms having different atomic masses. As I was saying that these are known as isotopes as was the situation with hydrogen. Hydrogen actually exists in three different forms. The three different forms in which an atom might exist. Different forms in which an element may exist. These are called isotopes. Now, hydrogen has got three different isotopes. So, as you can see in the picture, these are the three different isotopes of hydrogen. One is called proteum, one is deuterium and one is tritium. Now, what is the basic difference between them? The actual atomic mass of the elements become different if we consider the isotopes. This means the actual atomic mass of the elements are the average atomic masses. The average has been found by taking into account the masses of the different isotopes and the ratio or proportion in which they exist. The atomic masses of most of the elements have been rounded off to the nearest whole numbers. For example, atomic mass of hydrogen is taken as 1 u, who, whereas actually it is 1.008 u. So, in terms of average atomic mass, relative atomic mass of an element will be equal to average mass of one atom of the element divided by one twelfth of mass of carbon 12 atom. The atomic masses of some of the elements you can remember for example, hydrogen it is 1 u, carbon it is 12 u, oxygen it is 16 u, nitrogen it is 14 u, sodium it is 23 u, potassium it is 39 u and so on. Let us know about gram atomic mass. It is quite simple. The atomic mass of an element expressed in grams. For example, I just now told you that atomic mass of nitrogen is 14 u. So, what should be is gram atomic mass? Gram atomic mass is 
is equal to 14 gram. Similarly, if we consider the atomic mass of sodium which is 23 U, what should be the gram atomic mass? It should be equal to 23 grams. Now, I would like to tell you at this point that gram atomic mass of an element is also known as gram atom. Thus, one gram atom of nitrogen is the same as its gram atomic mass. So, now a question arises how do atoms exist? We have studied that the smallest portion of matter is known as atom and it has an extremely small size. In general, the atoms of most of the elements do not exist independently of their own. The elements of inert gases that are also called noble gases are the exceptions in this case. For example, the atoms helium, neon, argon can exist independently. But what about the atoms of other elements? The atoms of the same or different elements are bonded together tightly by strong forces of attraction also called chemical bonds. So, the atoms of the same or different elements are bonded together by strong forces of attraction that are called chemical bonds. The new species which are formed as a result of this chemical combination are called molecules. So, right now on your screen, I am showing you the basic difference between atoms and molecules. As I told you that the atoms of the same or different elements are bonded together tightly by strong forces of attraction called chemical bonds. So, the new species which are formed as a result of this chemical combination are called molecules. So, what are molecules? Molecule represents a group of two or more atoms, same or different, chemically bonded to each other and held tightly by strong attractive forces. So, molecule, molecule represents a group of two or more atoms which may be same or different that are chemically bonded to each other and held tightly by strong attractive forces. Molecules are represented in terms of symbols of constituting atoms and it is known as the chemical formula. Now, molecules and atoms, how do they differ from each other? Atom is the smallest portion of an element which can take part in chemical combination. It may or may not exist independently. Molecule is the smallest portion of a substance which may be an element or a compound which exists independently. Atoms with negligible mass and size can not be seen while molecules which are aggregate of atoms can be seen. Now, molecules are of two 
types. Molecules of elements and molecules of compounds. So, as you can see right now on your screen, molecules of elements and compounds. Let us discuss one by one. Molecules of elements. Molecules of elements are formed by the combination of two or more atoms of the same element. The number of atoms present in the molecule of an element represents its atomicity. So, a molecule of hydrogen is made from two atoms of hydrogen as you can see in the picture. So, its atomicity is 2 and it is represented as H2. Similarly, a molecule of oxygen is also made from two atoms of oxygen. Its atomicity is 2 and is represented as O2. A molecule of sulphur is made from 8 atoms of sulphur. Its atomicity is 8 and it is represented as S8. It is a polyatomic molecule. So, accordingly we can decide whether an element is monoatomic, diatomic, triatomic, tetraatomic and so on. Like I would like to list some of which. Like for example, argon, the symbol is AR, it is monoatomic and it is written as AR. Hydrogen, symbol is H, it is diatomic, it is written as H2. Ozone, the symbol is O, it is triatomic, it is represented as O3. Phosphorus, symbol is P, it is tetraatomic, written as P4. Finally, sulphur, symbol is S, it is octaatomic symbolized as S8. Now elements like carbon which exist in the form of diamond and graphite in which a large number of carbon atoms are linked with one another, it is not possible to express the atomicity of such elements. Similarly in metals like sodium, copper, iron and so on, large number of atoms are closely packed in space as crystals. They too do not have any atomicity. Now, I must like to tell you that recently a form of the element carbon has been found in which 60, I repeat 60 atoms of the element are combined to give a very big molecule. Just imagine it is C60 and it is known as Buckminster Fullerene. Now, coming to molecules of compounds, I would like to go back to the previous page in which you can see a compound. In the molecules of compounds, the atoms of different elements are combined or bonded together by chemical bonds. These are present in definite proportion by mass according to the law of constant proportions. The molecules of compounds may be also diatomic, triatomic, tetraatomic and polyatomic in nature depending upon the number of the atoms linked or combined by chemical bonds. Now, in this case also I would like to give you some example like for example, hydrogen chloride. What are the combining elements? Hydrogen and chlorine. It is diatomic because there are two elements and symbol is HCl and the ratio in which the elements are combined is 1 is to 35.5. This is the ratio of combination. Similarly, for water symbolized as H2O, combining elements are hydrogen and oxygen. 
there are three atoms as you can see two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen so it is triatomic and the ratio by mass is 1 is to 8 for hydrogen to oxygen. Molecules of elements are homoatomic in nature which means that the atoms present in them are the same. The molecules of the compounds are heteroatomic in nature in the sense that different atoms are present in them. For example, molecule of nitrogen element is homoatomic, it is represented as N2 whereas in case of a molecule of methane it is CH4 which is a compound and it is heteroatomic in nature. I will end today's discussion at this point. In our next video lesson, we will be studying about ions and chemical formula. Thank you.